I'm Eileen Hopkins and I'm Executive Director of AI Media. Uh, you've probably seen our stand outside and we also sponsored your block party last night and we all had a great time, so I hope you enjoyed it. This is my colleague sitting down here. I'm sure she's going to stand up and reveal her sash. Sue Sanoison, who's joined me on this trip. She's come all the way from Australia and I've come from the UK. So, captioning for universal design. Just a bit about AI media. We believe in a simple idea that by enabling people to read what's being said, as it's being said, we can transform the lives of all people, of millions of people. We have a mission, um, we also have Stevie featuring uh, largely in it, to make every piece of content accessible to every person. AI doesn't stand for artificial intelligence. We were formed long before that was uh, a reality. AI stands for access innovation, but it also stands for access inclusion. It was founded in 2003 by Tony Abrams and Alex Jones. And Alex was profoundly deaf, he still is profoundly deaf. And it started because they um, were at a party together and they met the uh, owner of a local news station and they were talking about the news that went out. And Alex said, I can't see, listen to your um, programs because I'm deaf and there are no captions. So the guy said, well, build it and we'll come. So AI Media was formed to bring uh, broadcast captions to this news station. We're a commercially focused social enterprise dedicated to ending the experience of social, education, and vocational exclusion. That's a very grand aim, but I think everyone in the company is totally committed to it. So, as I said, we started in broadcast television and we've captioned thousands of hours of content and we've begun to understand that words and their impact are very important. And these are two words, I suppose, that have driven most of my career, which has been in the main in the field of autism. Disability, a word that disables, and access, a word that includes and enables. So those two words are very, very important to us. And we now know that captioning can support literacy, access to the spoken word for children and adults who are deaf or have an ASD, teachers wanting to improve their practice, and I'll talk a bit about that later. It creates job opportunities. We uh, use social media a lot, and it makes your events accessible and inclusive. I really like this, um, this picture. So captions increase video views by keeping uh, audiences and students engaged as they usually watch silently on their devices. And cra captions create a more inclusive world, allowing all people to enjoy videos, not just the hearing audience. And captioners, captions make video content understood by search engines by allowing indexing. And that for a student is very important. Being able to search for keywords is key. A few facts from the UK. Ofcom, which is our Office of Communication, which regulates the broadcasting services in the UK, found that 7.5 million people in the UK, 18% of the population, use closed captions. And of that 7.5 million, only 1.5 million were deaf and hard of hearing, which is quite an interesting fact. 80% of television viewers use closed captions for reason other than hearing impairment. And closed captions benefit many more than just those who require them for accessibility. When Ofcom asked participants why they use subtitles or captioning, people said subtitles, which is the word we use in the UK, are very effective in making programs understood. This was um, cut from one of our newspapers in the UK and it raised the question about can watching television, which has been decried for a long time, improve my child's reading ability? And my answer to that is you bet. So the impact of captioning begins in the home. If children are watching television and videos at home without 
closed captioning, they're missing a wonderful opportunity to learn. And it's a simple fix. Sit, switching on the captions on through the menu, uh, on the TV or the remote makes it all accessible. Not meant for the deaf and hard of hearing, but benefiting them. But if you want your children to learn to read preschool, put the captions on. We know that they're what children are watching movies on a variety of devices, smartphones and tablets, all with the capability of having captions. Closed captions in education. Lecture capture, which all of you will be familiar with, I'm sure, provides all students an opportunity to review content and reinforce learning by allowing students to view recordings. And that is an interesting thing to think about, especially in terms of universal design, because we're talking about all students benefiting. And if all students benefit, it isn't specially available to those who are deaf and hard of hearing or have autism or dyslexia. And so it removes the, the possible stigma of having a special uh, accommodation made for them. So it makes closed captions ensure that content is accessible to everyone. So let's think about the wider impact. It's been suggested that transcripts from live caption sessions can serve as an accommodation for students who are debilitated and unable to attend lectures due to depression and anxiety. And with my colleague, I've been doing some research with um, US universities, mainly on the East Coast, to look at compliance with the ADA. And one of the major issues that they raise, raised was the fact that over 50% of the students at some time suffered from mental health issues and so were out of college or university for a period of time. So we know that um, getting transcripts and having access to captions can, can enable them to keep up with their studies. For the rest of the students on campus, there's another big benefit. It allows them to search captured content. And if they're looking for a particular uh, section of work that they may have missed or they want to review, it's easy to find. This is my particular area. I've spent 40 years working in the field of autism before I came to AI Media. And we seem to have lost the display, but never mind. Oh, it's back again. Um, so we, we know that students with autism have issues um, with audio processing. They have a, a very literal interpretation of language. And sometimes that means that students, that people with autism can get hung up on particular phrases and try and interpret the meaning of them in a very literal sense. So um, the classic one, which is very easy for everyone to understand, is it's raining cats and dogs. And the person with autism may think that it's literally raining cats and dogs. So that phrase would be replaced by it's raining heavily or something like that. Also, we're very bad at giving instructions. We give very complex instructions. Uh, it's very unusual for us to uh, break down instructions and we might say, Sue, um, can you stop recording me now? Uh, put the phone down oh, and pass me that book while you're doing it. That's very difficult for a person with autism to understand. So what we do, what our very, very talented re-speakers do, is that they replace that by symbol sentences, breaking down e each action into one sentence. And it's all delivered a simple captioned text. Then there's the smartphone. These, these are designed for everybody to use, but not always made for people with disability. And access to content is key to supporting anyone who's deaf and hard of hearing, have an auditory processing issues, who just, or who just want to watch videos uh, and streams without the sound. So I've got a question for you now. Have you checked your phone today? Where did you check it? And perhaps you're checking it now. So you won't have the sound on, but seeing captioned content would be very useful. So this is some facts from Facebook. It's estimated that video will account for about 70% of all internet traffic by the end of 2018. So not long, a few months away. 
and Facebook says that an estimated 80... Sorry. 85% of videos are watched without the sound on. And that's mainly because you're watching them now. You're watching them in um, crowded places like buses, um, in the classroom sometimes, sadly, uh, all sorts of places where you have the, the sound on. So Facebook uh, launched Facebook Live in 2016 and soon realized that a large number of people were missing out and they wanted to add live captions to the live videos. And amazingly, with all their trillions and trillions of dollars and all their amazing development teams, they couldn't do it. So AI Media collaborated with them and we built them uh, a solution. And so we were announced as their live captioning launch partner in 2017. And that's quite a thing if you think about the resources that Facebook have. So who is benefiting from captioning? The impact is greater than you might think. This is an area that I fall well into, seniors. Approximately 95% of people over 75 watch TV every day. They rely on TV for news and entertainment. And we know that with, there's a decline in the ability to process audio, auditory signals and your, your hearing begins to deteriorate. And this has been seen in uh, listeners who have normal hearing. These are some of the things that seniors say. Hearing aids don't always provide significant improvement. Captioning, however, results in immediate and significant improvement, whether at home or in a large public space. And I know myself that when I'm watching TV at home in the UK, I like American crime programs particularly, I find it quite difficult to pick up all the diverse accents that I'm hearing. So I put the captions on, just so I can hear English, which I'm supposed to speak, delivered in a different accent, and understand it. And we know that uh, the use of the internet and social media is increasing among seniors. So this is going to be a growing issue that our seniors need the support of captions. So it's easy to miss what someone has said. And you're probably familiar with this sort of miss here. And captions give people a second chance to understand what's been said. Many students and families speak English as an additional language. And these are some amazing stats. And I'd just like you just to put down your knives and fork for a minute and just look at these stats because they are fascinating. In Australia, 3.9 million people speak a language other than English at home. In the UK, 4.2 million people use a language other than English as their main language. And in the US, 60 million people speak a language other than English at home. And I think that's quite an amazing statistic. So what do we do to help these people develop their English? Well, switching the captions on, the television particularly, helps improve uh, comprehension and reduces anxiety in these populations. What about events? Attendees who are deaf and hard of hearing or have an ASD or are simply seated too far away from the stage often struggle to understand what speakers are saying without a means of access such as live captions. If people don't know what's being said, they become frustrated and feel excluded. One in six people being a, is affected by some sort of challenge and it's important to accommodate all attendees so that everyone can access the information being presented. This is a bit about us, a bit about AI media. We can broadcast live captions to multiple platforms simultaneously. We live caption YouTube, Facebook and Twitch. And I have to say that until introduced to Twitch by my colleague, I didn't, hadn't heard of it. But we apparently do live captions on Twitch. And it's great for events, lectures, convocations and sports. We obviously do live remote cart and we've developed a proprietary platform to deliver remote cart. 
and students can see on their own devices, any web-enabled device. So there's a, a website there that you can have a look at. I keep being assured that if you play with it, you can't break it. So please have a look at it. A um, bit more about us. All, after all live captioning, a, a transcript is created containing all the dialogue that's been captioned. And this makes events accessible to people that are deaf and hard of hearing. Um, because there's an opportunity to read the transcript afterwards and have a second chance. Providing captioning services promotes inclusion for everyone, not only creating an accessible event, but creating a positive atmosphere and a greater level of impact for audiences, whether they're present physically or watching via a live stream. And increasingly, with students travelling a long way to go to universities, the cost of attending events is sometimes too much for families. And if there's a live stream, families can attend the event without actually being there. I talked a bit about the transcript, um, and it's accessible through the Special AI Live portal. And one of the features that we really like is that when captions are being delivered, there's a facility so that the recipient can chat with the captioner. You don't need reminding, because this is a UD conference, of the seven principles of UD. And we believe that captioning, and particularly the sort of captioning that we're able to provide through AI media, meets all these seven principles. We're local, we're everywhere, training locals in the art of live captioning and providing customer support. We've got offices in Ohio, in California, in Toronto, in London and Sydney. So we're truly global and we're able to provide services 24-7. We're faster and cheaper and you can trust our quality because we deliver very, very accurate um, services mainly because we're rooted in broadcast, where there are penalties for broadcasters who don't use um, captions that are 99.6 accurate. So the, cap the penalty falls on the broadcaster, so our contracts are as good as the cart that we deliver. It's easy to look for what you need, and we'll support you in making your job easier. These are some of our clients. Um, there were too many to get onto um, this slide. There are lots more, but this is just a sample of the sorts of um, clients that we have. Some are in the UK, some are in Australia, and a lot of them are in the US. This is a key feature for us. We're local with a global infrastructure. So, as I said, we operate 24-7. There's a saying within the company that the sun never sets on AI media and that's because we operate in every possible time zone. We know the community that we serve and believe it or not, it says here we have over 1 million fans on Facebook. We now have a, a 1 million point five um, fans on Facebook. So since the, we put this together we've gained half a million fans, which is an interesting stat. So thank you for listening. Sorry to disturb your lunch, um, but if you've got any questions, come and see us at the stand. And thank you very much for your time. <laughs>